In this tutorial, we're going to be examining the node MIB Ambient Occlusion and a variety of things that you can do with that node. We're going to be exploring how to get the ambient occlusion. We're going to be exploring how to generate some decent tangent space normals, uh, as well as how to do uh, transparent AO uh, with mental ray nodes. Now, uh, just quickly, I just wanted to show this is a, a real world project where basically uh, we were, this is going into a game engine, so we're going to have some uh, low res building. Uh, so basically I just generated enough high res information that I could break it down so that I could get my texturing that I could then transfer onto uh, low res geometry. And uh, there's a variety of reasons I don't want to do something like transfer maps or X normal uh, for what I was doing. And so uh, with that said, let's just get started. We don't need all of this. We just need the one piece so that we can, because this is really just an uh, ambient occlusion lesson. And, you know, there's a variety of different ways of generating ambient occlusion, and this is just one way. Uh, it's a very simple, clean, and uh, efficient way uh, that doesn't involve a lot of setup or nodes and, and, and can do a variety of things. So I'm going to actually just delete all of that out of there, and then all we're going to be left with is what's going to become our tile that we'll be able to put into Photoshop and paint on paint on top of as well uh, as an object that's going to generate some tangent space normals for us. So uh, with that said, I've also got a camera here. If we look through it, you can see that the camera's already been set to uh, render a 1K square. Okay, with the camera selected, I'm just going to go over a few quick settings here. I've got a camera with an aim, and the aim is just at 0, 0, 0 at the center of the world. And all I've done is move the camera back in Z. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, I mean, reasonably far enough, uh, and I'm using a very, very shallow angle of view, which is like, you know, basically a, a focal length of a thousand, which is basically going to make it as basically an orth as orthographic as a camera as you can possibly have without it being exactly orthographic. Um, and uh, the only reason I'm doing, again, this is it's just easier than setting up an orthographic camera. It also gives you a little tiny bit of perspective for your textures so that you can kind of get in some of those... It just gives you a little tiny bit of perspective, which is good, I think, uh, personally, for the texturing. And uh, it's got uh, 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 the film aspect ratio is set to 1 uh, because we're running through a square. Uh, because if you've watched any of my videos before and you look at the render settings, this number here, film aspect ratio, should always match device aspect ratio. And that changes depending upon the resolution. Uh, if you did a 16 by 9 and be 1778 or whatever. So now uh, that we've just kind of gone over those camera settings, I am going to, uh, we just have that geo, it's all here. And all we're going to do now is open up the hypershade. And we're going to come over here into our mental ray uh, menu, and we're going to create uh, an MIB illuminant, illuminate, illuminate Lambert here. And then under here, under the texturing tab, we're going to create an MIB ambient occlusion. And I'm just going to drag that on top of the Lambert's ambience. I'm going to turn the ambient all the way up and the diffuse all the way down. Okay. I'm going to grab everything, and I'm going to assign it. Okay, so now we've got it assigned. Now, this is just at your default settings. I just want to make sure that my render settings are low enough, which they are. Uh, setting it to one uh, in box, and I'm rendering to five half resolution uh, under my test resolution settings. We'll just look through the camera, pull up that render, and let's just snap off a render. And I'm going to just pause right here while it begins to render. You can see the AO come in. Actually, it's rendering pretty fast, so I think I'll just stay. So you can see we're immediately getting a decent enough AO that we can go in and uh, use this in Photoshop to start painting. I mean, again, we're going to increase the samplings. This is with the lowest quality settings. So the first thing, though, let's just kind of e examine this node and take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so I'm going to pop up in here and I'm going to go and click into the node, and one, we've got our sample settings. The sample settings are going to be how you control the quality. So for instance, for right now, let's just pump that up to 64, okay? The spread is kind of like a zero to one gradient of black to white, of how much and how hard the spread is. We want a soft spread, so I'm going to set that all the way to one. Now, max distance. So the way that max distance works is right now it's set to zero. And because it's set to zero, 
it's going to be basically taking the bounds of your scene and calculating out an average distance. But we can also control that. And the first thing I'm going to do is probably make something that's not going to look too great for us. So I'm going to put that at 1. And uh, uh, let's just snap off a quick rendering and see what happens. So you can see right away that we're practically getting no AO because and or ambient occlusion because now uh, it, we've set the distance and so because now that we're setting the distance we don't have that override uh, and so it, the distance of one is just not that sufficient because it, it, the, the the longer the distance the greater the amount of calculation so the greater amount of uh, uh, of ambient occlusion so. I just happen to know that with this number that we just need pretty much probably a number I think about 10 will probably do it okay so with that number set to 10 and the only reason I'm actually really sure you could keep it to zero it's a little less efficient I think in the long run if you're going to use this shader but I really want you to see how that number works and how it can change and alter your scene because sometimes you could potentially have a scene where you've got to set that number to like a thousand and we're going to look at that later on uh, with that said, I'm just going to pause this until the render's done. Uh, well, the render's done. You can see the samples are better. I uh, 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 on the AO itself, it's not as grainy, but we're still not quite getting as much detail in there as I'd like. So we're gonna, chances are we're going to have to increase that number a little bit. Uh, and uh, so let's just do that and come back here and set that to 100 and see what we get. Okay, I'm going to snap off another render. Okay, well, we can see that this render with that setting of 100, I'm getting all the detail in there in the darks uh, and, and information that I would like. Uh, and it's basically looking pretty good. Um, I've got this plane back here. I, I, we're not going to need AO, uh, that AO around there. So I'll probably have to end up rendering out some masks and stuff like that for Photoshop. But I wanted it in the windows from behind here. And uh, so uh, with that said, let's go back to the node and take a look at a few different things. Okay. So now let's look at this. We've got this output mode and the output mode is right now set to zero, which is going to give us the calculation for giving us the, the shading effect that we call ambient occlusion. But that same information can be translated into a lot of different things. And so with this, what I'm also going to want to do is you can see that I've got my object and it's facing directly down the Z axis. So if I just come here to output mode and I change that to number two, and now we snap off another render. Let's just keep this in the uh, graph here. Let's see what happens, and I'll be right back. Okay, now that the render's done, you can see that what we've got here is we've generated some decent, uh, be, you know, built at least the foundation of some decent tangent space normal maps that we'll be able to transfer to our low res geometry. Uh, in order to get decent uh, bump mapping uh, and normal mapping uh, in a game engine. So with that said, I'm going to want to make a few adjustments and show you a few different things. So let's come back here and let's look at the hypershade. Okay, so this time what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create a Maya Lambert. And I'm going to take the MIB ambient occlusion and drag it on top of the ambient color of the Maya Lambert and make sure that my color is set to 1. I'm going to select all the objects. I'm going to assign, it to the material, assign the material to the objects. I'm going to close the hypershade and I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to just check and make sure that everything is working as expected. We just need to render a little region. We can see that that render region is done and we're basically, if I click off and the red square goes away, you'll see that we're basically getting the exact same thing, which is good. That's what we want. So now, why would I do that? Well, I can do a few different things more easily with a Maya Lambert than you can with an MIB Illuminate Lambert, which is such as get bump effects. So what I'm going to come do now is I'm going to open back up the Hypershade. And I'm actually just going to uh, 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 delete that shader. Ah, no, I'm going to keep that shader in here for now. So, right. So then what I'm going to come over here is into the Lambert. Now, I'm not going to get this like production done. I'm just going to show you basically what you could do. So one, in the bump mapping section, let's just apply something like a uh, 3D fractal, solid fractal. Okay, right. You can see that we're getting some bump effects on the shader. Uh, with our shader graft here in the hypershade, I'm going to come here and I'm going to select on the uh, 
the the 3D texture placement node, which is basically like a 3D representation of the size of your tile, and you can see it's pretty small down in there. And I'm going to scale it up to like a 20, 20, 20. And this is basically going to be define the outline of your fractal here, uh, and then I'm going to come here to this, and I'm going to set this to two just to make sure that we get an effect, and we can see. Uh, so maybe I'm going to set it to like four just to make sure that we can see what's going on in the render. Okay, that said, I'm just going to come up here and snap off another render. Well, you can see that uh, the bump map is translating into our normals render, which is good. That's basically what we want. So uh, now, just a note here, uh, you know, this is, I, I wouldn't use this node exactly in this way to do all of these bump effects. This is just really showing you how you could potentially apply your own black and white bump effects and affect the normals render of your own render so that you can get decent normal maps with some hard surface geometry uh, uh, and uh, some texturing that Crazy Bump uh, would have a hard time translating. And that's basically, it's just, a, it's just a little bit more convoluted version of that. Okay, so with that said though, the last things that I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to come in here and I'm going to want to increase the quality. Now for my final rendering quality for textures, I'm going to always set it to 4. Uh, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to set it to Mitchell, which is a good uh, filter for still images, right? And I'm going to come up here, uh, uh, I want to go, I want to make, check all of our settings here real quick. Yeah, everything is fine there. And then I want to make sure that I go into the shader. I'm going to just graph that real quick. And I want to increase the sample settings on the shader itself to 128. Okay, so everything else is good. The first one that we're going to want to render is because we want our uh, our uh, uh, bump to be reflected in our ambient occlusion render as well. So I'm going to set that back to zero to go into our ambient occlusion. I'm going to just minimize that, come up here. Oh, I want to come up here to our render settings too and make sure that we are rendering at full resolution. So I'm going to set that to a, uh, render settings in the camera. Uh, the last thing that we're going to want to do is just, especially for the normals, uh, I'm going to change this because of the game engine and I don't need uh, multiple files. I'm just going to actually render this to a uh, TIFF. And I'm going to come here into the quality setting down at the bottom and I'm going to go into the frame buffer and I'm going to set that to 32-bit. And that 32-bit float is going to be primarily stay for my normals render. Uh, in Photoshop, I will translate the AO and paint my textures in 8-bit, but the engine uh, can handle 32-bit float uh, uh, normal maps, which is what it likes. And with that said, I'm going to snap off these renderings. It'll take a little bit. So I'll render them, put them in the frame buffer, and we'll look at them, and then we'll continue on from there. Okay, well our renders are done and I've put them into Photoshop and uh, just kind of quickly organized my files so that we can take a look at them. You can see that we have our uh, AO here and our uh, normal here, uh, just to go through these really fast. Um, and I've got a rough uh, diffuse laid out. Uh, I've already just put in a few things here so you can see there's some kind of window, some kind of stone texture. Uh, something up there that will, that will be obvious. And you can just see that all we have to do is just click on our AO. I've already set it to multiply and the AO transferring over the stone is giving it uh, some of the detail that we need to bring out the details of the geometry uh, that will be transferred to some simplified geometry for the game engine. And uh, we have our normal map that will provide us a, a good and a detailed bump. Uh, for the engine. Back in Maya, I wanted to just quickly show you how to make some transparent AO with mental ray nodes. If you look in the hypershade, you can see quickly that all I've done is I've got a uh, checker pattern going into our original Maya Lambert material. Just close that out. And you can see that it's mapped to the transparency channel. And well, what if we wanted to do that within this mental ray node? How would we do that? Well, Obviously, we could just do it in the Maya Lambert, but let's say for some we had a, a, a need to do it in a mental ray only node. And it also will begin to introduce us to the idea of compositing shaders within mental ray. So what we need to do is we need to come down and look in this sample compositing bin, and we can see that we have here a bunch of nodes, and the one that we want right now is MIB opacity. So what we have to do is just click on that, and uh, I'm going to graph all these 